Welcome to the TK Show with the Athletic Bay Area's Editor-in-Chief, Tim Kawakami. Hey everybody, Tim Kawakami here with the new TK Show. Reborn? I don't know. Re- rebirth? Or revival? I don't know. what One of the Renegotiated, that's for sure. Uh, uh, I'm at The Athletic now, Editor-in-Chief of the Bay Area uh, Operation, and we're starting the TK Show all over again. And to do that, there was only one guest I wanted, for good luck's sake, for just friendship's sake. I don't know. One of the th- I just li- I, I, I just get into, into rhythms here, and there was nobody else I wanted as my first guest on the new TK show. Then, Tom Tolbert, Man About t- Town, KMBR host, uh, and friend of mine. Tommy, you were the first guest on my last show, February 2015. Doesn't it feel great to be the first guest of the new show uh, in October 2017? Absolutely. And you forgot to mention I come at a very reasonable rate. (laughs) You do. You do. (laughs) And you also say yes. So those are all good things. Yes, I do. Those are all good things. Uh, Well, Tommy, great to hear your voice. Uh, I'll just bring it up. You know, you 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 had the uh, surgery, what was it, late August? And, yeah, it happened on uh, the thirtieth. Okay, and the thoracic uh, it was one of all a bunch of artery aneurysm. Thoracic aortic dissection is oh. uh, what it ended up being. Well, I, yeah, I, I know you've talked about it a lot. Though. Just what was that experience as you look back on it now? I mean, do you just say that? It's yeah, impossible it was. To uh, well, I mean, no, not I mean, not really. I mean, it just. You know, I, I got home the 30th like I do just, you know, every other night. And I sit down and watch TV with the family a little bit. And then they go upstairs and I watch, you know, I have games that I tape. And I watch some games on TV. And I was sitting there. And it was probably around 9, 9.30, somewhere around there. I remember it not being too late because I thought Laura would probably still uh, be up, uh, which she wasn't. But uh, so I just, I, I started having pain. The first pain I had was in my... Uh, temples both mm-hmm. temples simultaneously and i had pain in my my temples which i which i thought was kind of odd mm-hmm. and then that went away a little bit and then i had both i had pain in both my shoulder blades which i thought was really odd and then i had pain in my upper chest lower throat and i said okay the, anytime you start talking about the chest yeah. you start thinking heart attack and what's going on so i got on my phone and checked that out and they said you know if you're having a heart attack it's gonna feel like a fist this clenched fist and it didn't feel like that so i was just like what could this be so actually i probably spent not a long period of time but about 15 minutes in various positions on the ground in the chair uh you know knees on the ground chest on the couch just trying to figure out what the heck was going on and if there was a position that could alleviate the pain there wasn't so i went upstairs and laid down and she had, in fact, my wife had gone to bed, and I laid down next to her. She had just gone to bed. She's like, what are you doing up here? You don't come to bed till later. And I go, I just, I, I got a weird, you know, weird feeling. I just, I'm having these pains and those pains. And I just, they just nothing I've ever felt before. And she said, well, we should probably go to the hospital then. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. You know, I didn't even fight it. Most times I'd say, I don't want to go to the hospital. But, but this time was... It was just different. So I went there and they uh, ran some tests on me over at Alameda. I was there for probably, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. And the the pain was not severe, but it wasn't light. I mean, my shoulder blades were really killing me, which was, was hmm. odd. And so they ran tests and they came back and they said, we're taking you down to Stanford hmm. so or UCSF. So it's really just kind of what who could get you. I mean, who, who could have a doctor there uh, quickest and who could admit you and so it ended up being Stanford, and they brought an ambulance there, and they flew down there. And the one thing I do remember that cracked me up, I mean, I, I didn't know it at the time, that every minute was kind of – was a little critical. <laughs> I would guy, hope – I would think so, yes. Yeah, the guy driving the ambulance, I mean, Stanford's a little bit of a zoo down there, like trying to figure out, like, yeah. what building you're at, <laughs> oh, and they have man. construction down there, yeah. and the guy's, the oh, guy's like oh. – is this the building? He goes, oh. I thought this was a building. I'm, oh, lay, I'm laying there in the back thinking, yeah, we, we maybe like hurry this up just a, <laughs> just a tad bit. So, uh, yeah, they found it. They take me and boom, next thing I know I'm on the, you know, I'm in a room with a bunch of doctors and, uh, getting on a table and then, and then, then, then that was the, you know, then, then the hard part became my, obviously my, my wife, Lori and my, my kids, cause they were having to yeah. grind through four hours of, of surgery and then i wake up and 
uh, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I didn't find out until later that, you know, every time you tell somebody, you know, what you have, they're like, you know, I don't, I can't tell you how many people have come to me and goes, wow, like you were, you're, you're lucky to be alive. Like yeah, people don't survive those things. Those things are like, and I'm like, well, you're probably overstating it a little bit and come to find out, I don't know what the percentages are, but as of, as I've grown fond of saying, I go the thoracic aortic uh, dissection diet is fantastic. I'm dropping weight like you wouldn't believe. I go, unfortunately, side effects are death. I go, if you make it yeah, through that, yeah. you're gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah. I go, the side effects are rough. So I made it through that, and I uh, had to have a few procedures uh, after that because uh, one of the things that dissection did, and those that don't know, you have like three walls in your aorta, and, and a dissection is when one of the walls pulls away from the other wall, and the blood gets in between the the walls and it just becomes kind of a mess after that so uh no i mean i couldn't have been in a better place and i couldn't have had better better doctors but it's interesting because you see you know the bumper stickers and t-shirts and that kind of stuff uh live every day like it's your last or you never know or all this and all that stuff basically is bumper sticker stuff but when i look at them i go, well, I go yeah it is yeah. but i go now that i've been through this uh through this ordeal and uh, I, I look at things a little bit differently. And again, for me, people ask me how it was. I go, well, you know what I ask Lori, ask my kids because they're the ones that had to, you know, had to, like I said, grind through the, mm -hmm. not just the four hours of surgery, but the three hours or four hours before that, when I was over at Alameda. So uh, it's just, I was talking to Lori today. I'm like, God, I go, I see these people like, you know, it, it's funny because I'll be watching a game and they'll be at the ballpark and there's this dude who's like, you know, way overweight and he's, he's crushing a soda and popcorn and, and, and I'm just like, hey, what happened? Like, I, I, was, I played in the NBA, you know, I was, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a pretty good athlete at one point. I'm still in decent shape, not in great shape. And, and the one thing I got out of it was you just never know because yep. the doctor told me, he goes, you know what? He goes, we could have scanned you two days before it happened and we may not have seen anything wow. and, and i go well i go well there you go so i guess some things are just gonna you know there's some things you just you can't you can't stop they're just gonna happen one way or the other I and mean, my dad had issues with his uh aorta so obviously mm -hmm. it's a uh, genetic but no i mean it just it was it was a little scary and I'm, I'm back to getting back to getting back uh you know i've been been at work for uh, about a week and a half now so it's just you know you want to get back to doing normal things, getting out and walking and going and seeing movies and doing stuff with the family and stuff like that. But uh, it's funny. Another another saying people use all the time, puts things in perspective is just kind of a throwaway saying, but mm -hmm. like when you actually go through something yeah. like this, it does put things in perspective. Yeah. It's all, it's all perspective then, right? It's, it's all, all perspective. All perspective. <laughs> There's none of that little stuff. It's all perspective. It is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you're such a, good natured guy and obviously we it just comes through on the radio but i we all who, who know you that this is the way you look at life you're you look, yeah. at, look at life kind of through a quirky view and, and you you enjoy things and you find the funny things in it but was there a time when you weren't in that mood during this recovery period uh not really i mean there there was one time uh it, because i try to one of the things i always did uh, uh, try to live my life by the saying you don't don't stress over things you can't control. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way harder to do than it sounds. But for me, just because of my nature and I get, I'm, I uh, get my mom's personality. She doesn't let a lot of things bother her and she's really easy going. And I, I'm, I'm pretty easy going. I mean, maybe even real easy going. I just, I just don't let things bother me that much, especially things that I can't control. And I'm like, well, you know what, we'll just deal with one thing when it comes up. And if something else comes up, we'll deal with that. But I'm not going to worry about something coming up because I may be worrying about something that may never come up. Mm -hmm. But I did have, I mentioned the three procedures. So one of the things the dissection did was, and I won't get into all the details, but I don't even understand them all, but I, I wasn't getting blood flow mm -hmm. down to my leg. So I could walk but I could only walk about 90 seconds. And then after 90 seconds, I mean, it felt like I did a thousand squats. I had so much lactic acid build up in my, in my glutes and my hamstrings. I just couldn't go anymore. So I had to sit down and then after four or five minutes, I could do it again, but I couldn't get any better. So we did a procedure, didn't work. Another procedure didn't work. And then the final procedure 
you know, he told my doctor, told me, he goes, look, this is all I got for you. He goes, I just, he goes, this should, it should work. He goes, but we're just trying to do little baby steps here because we don't want to be any more invasive than we have to be. So the last one was a little more invasive because I have cuts on my, right above my growing, but it's not, not as invasive as, as what was coming next. (laughs) He told me if that didn't work, he goes, we got to go back to major surgery. He goes, we're gonna have to go back there, replace the part. He goes, then for sure you'll have blood flow in your legs, but you'll be in the hospital for a week. You're gonna have to go through what you went through the first time. And that, that was, that was the only part where I broke down a little bit. I was like, God, I just can't. I mean, I will, because I have to. And you just, you know, you just go to Stanford and you do it day by day. And I, but at that one, I was thinking, geez, I mean, that that'll be two major surgeries, three procedures, all in all in five weeks. So I mean, that 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 hurt me a little bit. And then uh, when I had the the procedure that one was a little more like i said a little more invasive than the other two so it took a little longer i thought i'd get up and walk right away because that's what it was supposed to be with the other two but my quads were really hurting me so i was like oh man i, I mean i couldn't make it from the street to the house i mean i had to like have somebody help me get to the house and i'm thinking jeez this is like i mean this is way worse than it was and they're like just give it time give it time and they were like the only reason we're letting you go home <laughs> because we know you don't want to stay in the hospital any longer so they go usually we would we'd probably have you here but you're in good spirits and good health so we're gonna let you go home so i woke up the next morning and i walked and the quad pain was like gone so i could like walk a little bit i still had a little pain in my in my uh in my hamstrings but i just man i just sit there and cried for like yeah three minutes i mean i mean i was so happy i'm like oh my gosh i go is this because that's all i wanted i go just put me on a path where i know i'm i'm I'm, you know i'm getting a little bit better like i can walk a little bit further like today i walked a mile and a half yesterday i walked a a little over a mile the day before that was like eight tenths of a mile so i mean i just wanted to get a little bit better and feel like okay my legs are getting a little bit better and i just when i woke up in the morning and the quad pain was gone i was like man i just and then Later on that evening, my, you know, my, my hamstring pain was gone. And then the next morning I got up and walked and I was only able to go four laps around the kitchen. And I went like 15 and I was so happy. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my, I'm getting blood flow to my legs. I'm going to walk a little bit now. And it was interesting because uh, I talked to uh, Steve, Steve Kerr, mm-hmm. and just for like about a week or three weeks, two, it was about two or three weeks, I go, man, I don't know how you know, you do it without knowing exactly what's coming next, yeah. because that was, that was, you know, I got a taste of what he's been going through for two years and I went through it for three weeks. And it's like, and it's almost helpless because you don't know, you think, you know, like you think, okay, like I was pretty sure they're going to figure this out at some point. They will, they just got to figure out exactly how to get it. But there's a part of you that thinks, well, what if they don't, what if yeah. they can't, you know, what if there's, they keep thinking we got it and they don't have it. And then you got to go do something else and they don't have it. And then all of a sudden you're like a month in three months in, six months in. And I'm like, I dealt with this for like three weeks and Steve's been dealing with this for like two years yeah. where it's like, and it's not even, you know, mine was, I mean, compared to his really straightforward. Okay. Here's what we have to do. This is what we got. We just got to figure out how to do it. His isn't straightforward at all. And it's like, you know, people, I don't think people really understand what he has to deal with on a day-to-day basis. I mean, he doesn't want to talk about it. I get it. He, he, he loves the people that, that will, you know, give him well wishes. He appreciates all of it, but he just wants to have, you know, he just wants to have his life back to where he can go play golf and he can do the things he wants to, wants to do. And people see him on the sidelines and talking in the media and they think, Oh, he's getting better. Well, better is a relative term. And for him, better is just kind of piecing together a, a day so uh it gave me a little bit of an understanding of uh you know what what he has to deal with on a not just day-to-day basis but week-to-week basis and 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 you wonder is this you know i think you always see we talked about keeping positive thoughts all the time i mean he's great at that but there are times where things creep into your head like is this going to get better at some point like i know it's going to i feel like it's going to but until it does you just don't know yeah i just i was wondering about that it's you know, is there a commiseration with Steve? Could, can, you know, is there just something where you guys have gone through so much together, uh, and you you probably at one, at one point you both probably figure you're invulnerable. You know, you, you're you're athletes. You're you're at the top of your you know yeah. your game, and you know you're not old. Steve's not old. I'm about mm-hmm. the same age. I'm not old. Yeah. 
uh, just, and, you know, I, I'm not asking you to reveal any private conversations, but just there's that something now, okay, you know, this is an interesting stage you guys are together I- involved in right here. Well, I told them, I said, I, I go, I actually, I go, I actually made sure or, 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 or I go, I don't know how I did it, but I tried to do it and it worked, gave myself the thoracic aortic, uh, <laughs> dissection. I go, because you told me. Well, you didn't tell me, but I know that you're tight. You don't want people asking you how you are. So <laughs> I knew if I had this, you would ask me how I am. And then as soon as you asked me how I am, then you couldn't tell me I couldn't ask you how how you were. So there was about a month period where, you know, we'd talk all the time and he'd ask me how I was. And I go, all right, you're opening the door. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is that so, is a great sacrifice you made for the conversation. Well, you know, that's you. what I do. You know, I'm, I'm a man of the people. <laughs> I'm just unwilling to go that far, and that just tells you how much greater a human being than you are than I. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, I just well, come up with better stories. There you go. There you go. I mean, I mean, uh, one thing my buddies who listen to you ask me, and I'm sure many people ask you, do you have to change your lifestyle? I mean, you're you're a beer drinker. You, we 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 know what you like to do. You like to watch yep. games and drink beer. I mean, does that yep. have to, is that changing now? Beer, no sodium, Tim. Wow. No sodium wow. in beer, so that was a fist pumper. Yep, yep. that's good. Uh, I, although I did tell my doctor, because my doctor was always telling me, he goes, the seven, he goes, seven to ten beers a week. <laughs> seven to ten beers a week is good. Seven to ten, you can have seven to ten beers a week. Yeah. I go, can I have them all on Saturday? He goes, absolutely not. <laughs> I go, well, what about four on Saturday and three on Sunday? He goes, he goes, you're pushing it a little bit. He goes, I'm really looking for kind of one a night type deal. And it's funny, because people know that I love I love beer, especially uh, craft beer, but I, I think people would probably be surprised even before this. I mean, I've had three beers since the uh, the uh, the event on the thirtieth, but I, I I I'm not a guy that came home and had like beer every single night. Like I I would go sometimes I would go a week and a half without having beer, but there were you know days that I like to come home uh have a couple beers certainly days on a saturday i mean i love watching college football i mean i could probably run through 10 12 14 beers on a on a saturday i won't be doing that again but no it's just really for me two things sodium and weightlifting and he said you can't he goes no more weightlifting for you of any kind of heavy weights he goes if you want to do like the rubber bands or light weights and stuff like that get your muscle tone back he goes go ahead knock yourself out but he said he goes you'd be really surprised how much the uh weightlifting will spike your spike your blood pressure and he goes for you you just can't no more heavy weights for you and then you know my brother is all over me now he's 10 years younger than me and everything i eat he's like oh too much sodium yeah, too okay. much sodium we got to get you good day. so he's actually coming to town uh next week and he's already cooked up like you know three or four or five different recipes and he's totally into it so uh that's that's basically it i mean for me it's okay. I, I'm probably not going to be the guy that has like, you know, 1200 milligrams a day or thing. You know, just, but it's moderation now. It's like I used to, we used to have pizza on Fridays here. We, we used to call it just pizza Fridays. You know, I'd stop and get pizza and bring it home on Fridays. And that was our, that was our dinner on Friday. But now it's going to be, you know, instead of once a week, it's once a month. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be looking at a lot of different things that maybe I ate uh, that, that had sodium in it. And I don't think, you know, now that I look at it, I don't think I, I had a real high sodium diet, but I got to keep track of it now. So it's just, for me, it's moderation. It's not, you know, trying to kill yourself, uh, no pun intended. It's not trying to be way below where you should be. It's just, you know what, let's make sure we got moderation. And then I, ch- I check my blood pressure every day and I'm going to continue to do that. And if I have a problem with it, then I'll, you know, make adjustments after that. So you're not you're a talk show host who wasn't on the air for a while. I mean, did you yep. did you find yourself? I heard you that first day, and it did sound like you had some things you needed to say. There's some pent up of a conversation you had. <laughs> uh, were you running through shows in your head while you're out? And who, and who was the person you're, you're 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 having that conversation with while you're out? God, I don't even remember to be <laughs> honest. I mean, there are things you're like you want to say. I mean, that's just the nature of the business, and that's kind of. That's kind of who we are. I mean, I, they, you know, we're we're in sports media, and I mean, that's you do what you do, I do what I do. We have opinions on things, and when you see things, you you want to talk about it, you want to write about it. And there, I mean, there were times where I wanted to do it. Uh, I don't know if I had anything in particular that I wanted to wanted to say. I, I've never felt like anything that I say is all that important. So there wasn't a time during the course of the 
my my rehab at home that I thought, God, I got to get on the air because people need to hear this. So I really want to talk about this or I got to do this. I just wanted to get back on the air because that's what I like to do. And I mean, I just want to have, you know, I want to laugh a little bit. And that's why I like doing the show. I mean, I did the first week or so from home and it was cool. I mean, the commute was nice. It was about 15 seconds <laughs> from my living room to the to the bedroom. But I like being around everybody. I like being there with John and Brian and Jen and and all the guys. And it just, it, it makes, it feels like a show when everybody's there. And I just, that's what I missed. I miss laughing for four hours and just talking sports and having a, having a good time. So there probably wasn't anything that I needed to get off my chest. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to get in there and laugh for four hours. Yeah, and, and Warriors weren't playing, so I guess that would be the, yeah. the, probably the number one thing you'd want to jump in on there. Exactly. Uh, what, did, what did you think about the Warriors that first game? I mean, I, I just write it off, but it is something to look at. It is something to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, I would almost think this is kind of plays right into Steve's hands. He, he kind of wants something to be able to show them. He wants to be able to say, look at the stuff you did wrong. We all know they're going to end up winning a lot of games. Yeah. But – he he does want teaching moments. He does he does want to be able to say you guys lack energy and we got to do something to fix that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, he made a point of it, and I think you know he made a he actually made more than a point of yeah. it. I thought about their conditioning. Yep. Like he he took every chance he could get for about a day and a half to talk about their conditioning. I mean, even people were talking about uh, uh, the phony clay, yep. and he made. I mean, they turned that into a conditioning zinger. So that was the one thing I thought he got across. As far as winning or losing, I don't think at this point. Uh, he feels like, and he said on on the air a couple of days ago that he doesn't have to grind for every win like a lot of teams have to. And I think he really loved getting uh, Jordan Bell in there and getting him some some key minutes. Uh, I, I thought it said more about Houston. I still don't think Houston can beat him uh, four out of seven, but I like I like Tucker. I like Mbamute on the on that team because they can play defense on the perimeter. They can switch out and stay in front of guys kind of like Draymond does, and they can shoot threes kind of like Draymond does. Now, neither of them are near the player that uh, that Draymond is. I mean, Draymond's one of the best players in the league, but it, I, I think those guys really, really fit well. I mean, if they can shoot in the mid, uh, you know, even 33 34% from three, Tucker gives them that toughness, and Mbamute gives them the length on the, on the wing. So I think it's said more about where Houston's at than it did where the Warriors at. I mean, they were they were down 13. Uh, Houston was. Draymond didn't play the fourth because he got hurt. Iguodala didn't play. And those are two guys that are great at running the offense, whether they score or not. They're great facilitators. Uh, facilitators. I always say the viscosity of the offense is much better with those two, or at least one of those two on the court. Things just move. And with, mm -hmm. without Draymond, things just kind of stopped in the fourth quarter. They only scored 20 points. In the fourth quarter, I know they gave up 34, but if they scored 30 like they did the rest of the quarters, they end up winning by, you know, nine points. So, for them, uh, it, it's almost like the old Warriors that ruined the regular season because you knew those Warriors wouldn't be in the playoffs. You know, these Warriors <laughs> are going to be in the playoffs. It's just a total, it's a total role reversal. But I mean, it just, it, for me, the Warrior season is is fun for two reasons. One, they're fun to watch, and the way they play is fun to watch. And obviously, well, maybe three reasons. Obviously, Steve is the head coach, so I like following along, and you know, we'll, we talk a lot during the course of the season. Uh, and then, you know, when they play Houston or San Antonio or Oklahoma City or maybe Boston, maybe not as much now, uh, Cleveland. There's about four or five games that are really fun to watch them kind of test themselves during the regular season. But I, mean, I think Charles Barkley, you know said at best he goes i'm just making stuff up until we get to cleveland and and the warriors and 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 that might may not be 100 percent true but it's pretty close i mean you know we're doing warrior stuff and i'm talking warriors and we're talking you almost have to break it down as a singular event every single game because if you ever go big picture then really none of this stuff matters yep unless they lose three or four four or six and and they did that last year and it really didn't seem to matter that much yeah you know no it you, doesn't you, you just, just keep moving you just keep rolling through it i know i did want to get back to the other topic i just just talking comparing it to steve and one thing yeah. I, I know about steve is this ailment as tough as it's been for him has really he knew he wanted to do this he knew this was the job that he always wanted he knew he was great mm -hmm. at this job but this ailment has only made him more convinced of this that he that's this is what he wants to do he's fighting yeah. every day of his life to coach 
uh, and and it's really sharp. Like, are you going to quit? No way. There's hell. He is going. <laughs> this is what he's going to do. I wonder if that you know. And and without anything related with me medically, I, I've changed jobs and doing this job has convinced me this is what I want to do. This is it. I would yeah. fight to do this job. Uh, does your episode, Tommy? You know, I mean, you. I know you love doing what you do. I know you're great at it. Does it any way you define like this is what I want to do, or maybe do you not want to do it that much longer? No, I mean, I, I I've always said as long as I'm having fun, I'll continue to do it. I mean, really, I'm. I mean, I just you're stealing at this point, and it's like being Jesse James. You got the handkerchief on and everything <laughs> around the face, and I mean, I I get to talk sports. I get to talk sports, and I get to watch sports for a living actually it's like really beneficial because if i didn't have this job i wouldn't have the excuse of like watching sports all day on a, on a, on a given day and go well hey i have to watch it as part of my job i i have to watch this and it's a valid not even an excuse <laughs> it's just valid period i mean i i i, I have to i mean i've look i mean I, truth be told i mean and when I tell Lori that I, I have to watch Michigan Penn State, I probably don't have to watch Michigan Penn State, but I want to watch Michigan Penn State, and I'll find a way to talk about it on the air. <laughs> Maybe not for fifteen minutes, but I'll talk about it a little bit. I'll, so. I'll, I'll give her. I'll, I'll give you that one. Maybe those Mountain West games. Uh, you might be on the borderline. <laughs> You're something. thinking San Diego State Fresno? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that's eight seven forty five kickoff. Uh, yeah. might, might, be the, might be the one. Yeah, that's in jeopardy. yeah. He, yeah, you might be right. You you might be right. But no, I just I, I never really like after the event. I never really it reassessed things. Okay, where I'm in, what do I want to do, and how long do I want to want to do it for? I just want to keep doing it. I mean, I, I have a I have a great time. Uh, I've been able to work with a lot of really fun co-hosts. I mean, people that just want to. I mean, just want to come in there and do the same thing I do. I mean, I think everybody knows that you just come in and have fun. I mean, we're not we're not talking to GMs. We're not super serious. We're not solving anything. We're not. I don't. I don't believe that like people in organizations listen to us and go, "Hey, maybe they have a point." Man, that's that's absurd. I mean, I just think, and then I'm not saying they don't listen, but I don't even care. I just I just go in there and I want to talk sports. I mean, I love baseball i love basketball i love football uh i don't love i love talking hockey and watching hockey yeah. i mean we don't get that much of a push except for playoff time but i just love watching sports i mean i love that it's the it's the greatest reality television going and, and obviously i played so you know and i know a lot of people in different sports so you know i understand some more than others but i have a pretty good grasp on on most sports including you know some of the <laughs> mixed martial arts and mm -hmm. boxing I've watched forever. I mean, I just, I just, I love it. I mean, I love it. It makes me, it makes me happy to be able to, you know, to watch something and then go out there and, you know, talk about it with a guest or talk about it with John. It's just, I mean, it, again, I've always said, I want to, I've been so fortunate in that I've had a job now for close to 30 years counting playing in the NBA where I've, 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 I've had a chance to wake up every single morning and know that I was going to have fun on that given day. I mean, some days were more fun than others, uh, but it just, I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, my goodness, think about that. 30 years were something that you get to wake up and do something you love to do that day. That's awesome. Yep. And I'll just say, I told you this privately. It, it's my absolute failings. Is, it, I mean, everyone knows you're great on the radio, you're important, but when you were off, uh, there was a void. There was a real void. And uh, hearing your voice again, just talking to you on uh, here or hearing you on the radio, Tom, it's just it's just uh, immeasurable to say how much how much value you have to this area and how great it is to hear you back on the radio. I, I didn't want to say that. I don't want to sound mawkish here, but yeah, it, it is. No, it I, is but no I appreciate that, Tim. I mean, you know, I, 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 that's the one thing I did think about uh, over the course of this was, you know, when I was coming back. Uh, I mean, so many people uh, on Twitter or at the supermarket or just walking around town or I saw somebody at the movies yesterday just, you know, saying we'd love to have you back. And when I get that, that that makes me feel, I mean, really, really happy. I mean, I just I, I never really even thought of this throughout the course of my radio career until, you know, maybe four or five years ago, something like that. But. You know, I, I, again, I'm not doing anything. I'm not. I'm not solving anything. I'm just having. I'm just somebody having a good time. But the fact that other people are having a good time with me, 
and they're driving home and maybe they had a crappy day or maybe they didn't or maybe traffic's bad or maybe it isn't. But but the fact that I, I can envision people, you know, over the last 20 years driving home and laughing, you know, laughing with me and having a good time with me. I mean, that that to me, I mean, I I, I didn't think much of it again when I was younger, but the older I get, I'm thinking, you know, that that's that's a pretty cool thing that, you know, be, be, people are driving home and they're in their car thinking that it's, yeah, and they turn you on and all of a sudden they, you know, they laugh a little bit or every once in a while you can make them think. But I just, more so than anything, I want to make people laugh and I want to make people have a good time. And when people say, you know, we really missed you on the radio and we love hearing you and you make me laugh all the time. And that that's, that's the one that gets me, man. I just, there's nothing better than making someone, making someone laugh. And to be able to do that is a, it's a pretty cool feeling. And I got, I got quite a bit of that, uh, you know, in the last two or three weeks and I, it, it, you know, made me feel really good. And then it made me kind of think, wow, but you know, you, you are doing something out there that, you know, isn't super important, but maybe it's, you know, someone important that it helps somebody kind of relieve some stress or, you know, uh, laugh a little bit on their way home. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't really take that all that lightly. Well, Tommy, I'm I'm going to let you get to your job uh, being on the radio. Uh, I don't want to take. The, I, I promise you, I'd get you off at a certain time. I, I could talk to you forever. There's questions I could ask you, but we'll do it again. We'll talk. We'll run. Into yes, we will. But Tommy, great, great to talk to you. We've been. You know, listen, you're my good luck charm. I've told you that. Yep. I believe it. That's right. Uh, you and that guy in, in Ann Arbor, uh, and, and he's a little busy, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. He's a little busy, right? He's got Penn State coming up. But yes, to- he does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you got Penn State coming up, also, uh, I, I apologize, but I think uh, w- this conversation has been great for everyone to hear, and I do appreciate it, Tommy. Oh, I appreciate that, Tim. And uh, yes, he has Penn State. See if he can score more than thirteen points. I um, doubt it. And that quarterback might give up thirteen himself. If I've been watching, Jeez. Awful. <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on. And you know, anytime you want, uh, give me a buzz, and we can talk uh, Warriors. We can talk bowl games. We can talk NFL playoffs. Anything. You got it, Tommy. Everybody, Tom Tolbert, back better than ever. Great to have him on. Thanks, Tommy. You got it, Tim. All right, everybody. That's the first TK show of the new era. The new beginning. Uh, we'll see how if we get mess it up again. But the uh, well, last time was pretty good. This time I think we'll, we'll keep going. Might not be as regular as the old TK show. I have another job now, and it's pretty, pretty involving. But we will get great guests like the one we just had on. We will do the similar show. I didn't ask Tommy's favorite restaurant. We were running out of time and thought maybe in, the, in light of what was happening, maybe things are adjusting. But we'll ask him next time. All right, everybody. Until next time, it's TK Show. Tim Calcom. Thanks.